Hello, my name is Audrey Gordon, and I'd like to welcome you to day 20 of the Dataverse Advent Calendar. Today, we're going to start by talking about simple concepts of imports and exports from Dataverse. But note, tomorrow, we're going to double click on that when we talk about data flows. So consider this an introduction to importing and exporting with some simple tools you can use. And then tomorrow, we'll talk about data flows, which are recommended for any migration or synchronization task. So when we think about today's scope of work, I want you to think of basically three things, the import and the export that are found directly in the Dataverse workspace on from any table. All right, you have both import and export. Um, and then you I also want you to think about the primary key. So those of you that may not have heard about primary keys, primary keys are really important because they enable Dataverse to perceive uniqueness, right? And so how do you keep, how do you prevent duplicates? How do you make sure everything uh, kind of comes in and goes out accurately? A lot has to do with the primary key. And to define that for those of you that may not have a background in databases, the primary key is a column in a table that every single value in that column is unique. All right. In the case of the account table in Dataverse, the unique column internal name or logical name is account ID. And in that column, every number is unique. And these numbers are actually GUIDs, G-U-I-D. And GUIDs are kind of like the best practice for creating unique identifiers. All right. So with those things in mind, let's go look at this in Power Apps. So here I am in the account table. And I'm using this table because I've, I've suggested that all of you go to your developer plan and add sample data. Right? If you've added the sample data, you're going to have data to export in your database. All right. Um, okay. So here I am in the account table. Here's like a preview of my data. We talked about this UI earlier, um, back when I talked about tables. And so this UI is like a really cool editable grid that you can use. You can click edit and edit all the records, no matter how they are, how many there are. There's a preview of 10 records here. All right. So I'm going to focus on import and export. So let's start with the easy one, which is export. So we're going to click on export and this can take a couple of seconds. So be patient as it starts the export, then you'll get this little purple circle of hope. I call it which lets you know that it's in the process of doing something. So don't close this while this circle is spinning because it's working on it right now. And as it works on it, when it gets done, it will tell you that it was exported successfully and to click the link below to download it. So you can just click download it, uh, download exported data. Your browser will kick in in the way that it handles downloads. If I double click on that zip file, I'll get to the accounts table that has been exported. And then if I double click on that, I will find myself in a CSV in Excel, right? So, and this is only because my computer automatically opens CSV files in Excel. CSV is the standard for Dataverse whenever it's exporting data. Now you can easily create a, um, an Excel sheet from this. So one thing I do is I do control shift the number eight to highlight the whole table. And then I go in here and conditionally format it as a table. And then after I do that, I just save it as Excel, right? And so I just change the type to Excel and save. So now I actually have that as an Excel table. All right, that's all there is to export. Okay, before I go on to import, I just want to show you some uh, additional ways to export data as an end user. So you're consuming a model-driven app. You have options for export there that are automatically built in. 
I know a lot of our Canvas app uh, makers are actually creating flows and so forth for exports to create those unique scenarios, but they are actually built into model driven. So if I'm looking at any type of uh, list view um, or table view inside of uh, Dataverse, model driven apps, up here at the top, important, my export to Excel will export data out of here into Excel. You can also export templates. Where are templates helpful? Templates are helpful. I'll give you some details in a description. But templates are helpful if you want to modify the data and you don't want to make a mess, right? Um, and you want to do it kind of in batch via Excel. You can download a template and then edit it there. Um, and you can also create your own templates for that kind of thing. And then you can also import from Excel. So all of your exporting uh, tools are right in the UI uh, if, you're, uh, if you're an end user. All right, so very, very simple to do um, so that uh, people can craft their own reports. For instance, they can export the data and then pivot it, something I really enjoy doing. All right, so that's export from an end user perspective and import from an end user perspective. Okay, so let's take a peek um, at the reference doc that I want to show you. There is a reference doc and the, the link is in the description all about importing and exporting and we will uh, dive a little bit deeper into this tomorrow when we talk more about data flows. And when you think of data flow you'll also think of Power Query our query is the engine running behind this to help us transform and bring data in as exactly the way we want it. So you'll see that example as I run through my import. All right. And it, this page is really important. So please look at the bottom and kind of follow this instructions because it also includes troubleshooting tips um, as well as all the way down on the bottom of that page you'll see unsupported data types, data types that are not supported by import and export. All right, so figured I'd, I'd be transparent about that. You can see that on this page. And then there's some recommended content that you may also want to work with as well. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out and encourage you to please look at this page. It's the link is in the description. All right, so I'm going to do a quick import. I have a list called ARB listings. It's in a site called Construction Progress Hub. All right, so I want to bring that as a uh, table into Dataverse. So I'm going to go back to Power Apps, go to Data Flows. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, but I'm just going to create a new data flow and I'm going to call this Apartment Listings. And again, we'll have we'll have much more context and details on this tomorrow. And I'm getting this from SharePoint, so I want to make sure I use the right SharePoint here. There's SharePoint Online, uh, and that's the one you want to use. The one that says SharePoint Online. This one might be an on-premise scenario. You'd have to have a gateway set up, etc. All right, so I'm going to choose SharePoint Online, and then I'm going to go to that site, and I'm going to copy that link right there that's in the header. Then I'm going to go back to Power Apps and paste that link. Now before I paste I just want to point out you see how they give you an example here? That tells you the format so that you can make sure that you're putting in the right uh, format. right? Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you when we're talking about tips on this page the learn more will bring you into the connectors list where you can scroll down and choose SharePoint and learn more about the SharePoint connector. I already have a connection to SharePoint here, so that might be something that you might want to do in advance, but if you didn't do it, you can click here and create a new connection. All right. So I believe I have a connection to SharePoint already, so I don't have to create, so I'm just going to refresh, and then I'm going to choose organizational account, which is going to make me sign in right which is a good thing uh, there's a window that'll pop up so let me sign in I am Megan 
So I'll sign in as Megan. All right, once I'm signed in, I hit next. Okay, now the list I wanna bring in is called ARB listings. And here's where you can decide what you want. So I'm going to just use this first view to validate that I've got the right data, right? Looks like I've got the right data, so I'm happy, right? I chose the right list. Now I'm gonna hit transform, and this is where Power Query Query kick, clicks in, kicks in, and we'll start to transform. But I'm not gonna do any transformations today. We'll do that tomorrow. What I'm gonna do is select the columns that I want. Um, and in this case, I just want three columns. This apartment name, location name, I mean uh, owner name, and type. All right, tomorrow we'll do much more, okay? Uh, and I'm going to remove the other columns, okay? So now I only have three columns, okay? Uh, development name is what I'm going to put here. and maybe take out the E. And then here, I'm going to change this to owner. And notice I can just type, and these transformations are happening over here. And then I'm just gonna put type over here. We'll work with this list a little bit more tomorrow, but just, this is what we're gonna bring in today. And I think what I want you to take away from today is that you can bring in data from SharePoint. We will talk about virtual tables in a few days, but in this case, I'm bringing the data in Okay, I'm bringing the data in from SharePoint into Dataverse, and I've chosen these three columns. And all my transformations are here. Um, if you make a mistake and you want to you know, like go back, you can always delete your transformation and do it over again, right? So this is type, this is owner, and this is, I'm just going to call this neighborhood change my mind. Changing your mind is fine, okay? Then I'm gonna hit next. Now I'm gonna make a brand new table. So I'm gonna leave it new table, but I'm gonna say demo one here because tomorrow we're actually gonna bring this table in fully, all right? And you'll see much more tomorrow. But this is just my demo one table. Um, it wants me to map the data as far as what type it is. So neighborhood is text, owner is text, and type is text. So we're great, all right? And then I'm gonna hit next. Now I have a choice here to just do this right now, which will be a manual refresh, but I can also schedule a refresh. So not only uh, um, is this good for bringing in data, but it's also great for synchronizing data. So you can say, I wanna refresh this at some frequency. Right now, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to send any failure notifications to the owner, who, who in this case is Megan, right? And then you will be launched into the data flow place where you check. Now, you'll go here as well. If you import from Excel or you use any of the import features on tables, you still will go here to kind of track the progress and follow up. Um, and so you can see that the publishing is in progress. It points it out here. Um, this is the first time it was it's running, so it doesn't have any last published day or last refresh day. Um, if I had scheduled a refresh, it would indicate to me the next refresh uh, date and time. All right, and here, how long this takes completely depends on a lot of factors. Um, I do want to point out that my table that I'm bringing in here has approximately 5,000 records. All right, we'll just wait for that circle stop spinning and I'll be right back. Okay, once it finishes, you'll see that it's published and what time the last refresh was. If you ever get an error message here, so a red uh, X, click on that X and you'll get more details about it, all right? So, which usually help you to kind of troubleshoot, but I will also give you 
uh, on that same page I shared in the description below is a whole section on troubleshooting as well. So now if we go back to our tables, there it is, Demo 1. And if I click on Demo 1, you'll see all that data in there. Now I, of course, can show more columns. Uh, I had an owner column, right? So I can do that. Or what I can also do is just create an app from here, but I might want to set up my view, right? So if I go in here, look at my view, this will help me kind of check on my data. So I'm going to add the neighborhood, uh, the owner, which is text. You can tell the difference between it and the Dataverse record owner because the Dataverse record only has a little people icon in front of it. All right, probably in hindsight, maybe I wouldn't have named it owner because it could be confusing with the Dataverse owner. And then I'll put the type here, which is the type. So now I have, and I don't really want this one. So I just want neighborhood, owner, and type. That looks good to me. Um, okay, so let's save that and publish it and now we're going to go back and we're going to actually go back to that table and just hit create a ta uh, create an app just see how this looks we're going to call this demo app i didn't create any forms so i mean that's that's part of the part of the import of data and the creation of new tables can often be making sure you have views to support your new imports um, and that you have forms if you need them. All right, so I'm just going to play this. I don't think there's anything we need to do because we did set up the default view. And so there you can see it. And notice on the bottom here, we're looking at 1 to 50 of 4,997 records. And if we go back to SharePoint, there's 4,997 records. So that worked really well to migrate that data into Dataverse. All right, we will have, we'll have chances to talk more about data flows tomorrow and also about virtual tables coming up in just a few days. All right, so I'm gonna stop here for today on importing and exporting, and I'll look forward to talking to you tomorrow on day 21 of the Dataverse Advent Calendar. Happy Holidays.